Today on this old house, new windows replace our rotten bed. First step is demo. And if the toilet in the bathroom above goes where it's supposed to go, there's a joist perfectly in the way of the drain. We know how to fix that. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house and this 1880s cape here in Concord, Mass that we are working on. And the good news is the framers have arrived. So they're working outside as well as in and they are moving along. Now this little space right here down there is going to be a new bathroom and then right in here is going to be a pantry that is adjacent to a new kitchen that we just learned the layout of. So there's going to be a giant island coming right through here. And then starting over here, we've got kitchen sink. Then we've got a little banquette dining area right here. Original fireplace and chimney stays. And then this opens wide up to the modern side of the house. It's going to be sweet. So a couple changes up on the second floor, like this carpet, which goes, although the staircase stays. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Sonny. How are you? All right. Making some headway with the headroom up here. Huh? Yeah, we definitely are. Big difference up here. You know, it starts over here where we got a bearing rafter in there. We got a two by four wall and in that wall is a couple of bearing posts right here that are engineered and those will carry the load of the new engineered beam above. And all this was to raise the height of the ceiling back here. Okay, so, and so now, we had a low ceiling and that wasn't good enough? Well, we had a low ceiling, especially in the bathroom, but this is now an entry to the new hallway that's gonna go there. And we really wanted to make the ceiling height even all the way through. Because we changed the pitch of the roof and added a flat ceiling, we have room for any lighting that's needed, any ventilation, and any insulation that we added into the roof. Before, we couldn't do that. You guys cut off here, hangers to the new beam right there. Yep. All that's obviously new framing. And that hangers gets you. everywhere that's needed. Exactly. Beautiful. Okay, so that can make a big difference up here. Huge difference. All right, so here in the kitchen, we want to get rid of this bay window here. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, this window's not salvageable, it's rotted. And plus we got to put three double hungs really in its place, frame it in, and then one in the corner also. A little corner window redo, so this banquette gets a lot of light, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, and this should come out pretty easy. Like you say, it's rotted. I think what we'll do is get the high lift outside, make some cuts with the saw, and see if we can just push it right out, and then get to framing. All right, we removed the old window and our demo was complete and now we're ready to start framing for our new rough opening. Now these old studs down here, they're nailed into the side of the joist, into the old boards there. We can just leave them. They're 16 on center, so we're gonna cut for our new window height. The jack studs are going in here, cripple studs. They're going in there, they're gonna go alongside like that, nail them in tight, every 16 on center. Once those are in place, we'll set our sill height. All right, now we're ready for the sill plate on top of the framing here. Put that in, tap it down. All right, our first sill plate is on. We're gonna put a second sill plate on there and that will be the height for our rough opening once we install the header. 
But before I install this second sill plate, I want to figure out where we're going to put a mole post. And a mole post will be two two by fours that go between each window. So first thing I do is I take a two by, I measure here from the side of this, because this is a jack stud that will hold this end of the header up. I measure the rough opening of the window, which is 33. Mark 33, double, will go there. So because I'm so close to this, I'm just gonna put a double against this and that'll take care of it. Then I'm gonna go 33 again and then figure out where the jack stud will go there. So now this will be underneath, but a little bit off center, which is fine for our mole post. So we need a, to make up a half inch filler for the header and we use a half inch foam board for it that gives a good thermal break and insulates the header really well. Now we have that half inch piece of foam between two two by eight sandwiched in there. We have a nice insulated header now. Now we're gonna put adhesive on the outside edge of the beam, push it up and that'll stick it to the boards. All right, let's get it in there. You good? Almost, ready? All right, so now we cut our double plates and our header from the corner where it's supposed to be all the way over to this existing stud right here, which is a little bit longer or wider than we need it. So to make up the difference, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some fillers against the side of the existing jack stud right here. Put one here, one in the middle, and one at the top. Now this will bring us in to the rough opening that we need for our two studs right here against the window. All right, so now that we put the fillers in, we move the last two studs out. We now have three equal rough openings for our new windows. All we have left is install the sheathing. This old house has always taken a keen interest in housing problems for veterans, and affordable housing is a big part of the problem. The government estimates that on any given night there could be as many as 100,000 veterans with no home to sleep in. And that's why this historic school building is a very special place. This is the hard scrabble town of Dracut, Massachusetts. In 1898, this town built a four-room school for primary grades. It served the school system well for over 80 years, then slowly fell into disrepair as it was used for back offices for the municipality. Then this venerable old building found a savior. The mission of Coalition for a Better Acre is to advance the uh, lives of low and moderate income individuals through things like housing, affordable housing, workforce development, education, uh, and youth engagement. The town of Dracut decided to RFP the property. An RFP is a request for proposal, so the town uh, put together a, essentially a packet of information saying what they would like to see done with the building with the option to sell the property for one dollar, and CBA was the successful bidder. That one dollar and an idea is now a project to turn this rundown but historic school into nine housing units for veterans. 
So this old house will follow this project all the way until those first new residents move in. And today, it starts with a progress report. Ben Joyce is our builder in charge. Hey, Ben. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Good to see you. Yeah, same here. This is quite a building you got yourself. It really is. Yeah, it really is. We've got, uh, we've got our hands full with this one. So what was it like when you first showed up? Uh, it was in pretty bad shape, pretty dilapidated. We uh, you know, started the demo from the inside out. Uh, There's two layers of uh, siding on the outside we tore off. Uh, it's pretty, got a pretty cool tile uh, slate. Uh, roof that we're going to be keeping. Nice. Uh, so we've taken out the uh, old sashes, did some uh, asbestos abatement and lead abatement. So uh, now that we've got all the demo done, we're starting the uh, mechanicals. So what was the siding, the layers you took off? So the first layer was uh, clapboard, cedar yeah. clapboards, and then uh, shingles on top of that. Wow. Okay. Yep. And then uh, inside on all these walls behind us? It was, was a quite... mess. It was a mess. It was horse and lath and uh, uh, it was just it's a mess. Layers and layers of uh, years of uh, going over. So how long did the demo take you guys? Uh, about two months. You guys are going to have to save some stuff? We are, yeah. So we're saving uh, some of the transom doors and a lot of the uh, wa original wainscoting that was there. Yeah. Uh, we're saving the floors here. Those will all be redone. Yeah, pretty nice looking too. Yeah, yeah, should finish up nice. It's an unusual building in the sense that you've got these tremendously high ceilings, we do. big wide staircases. We do. I mean, it's a we real do. gem. We do. Yeah, it really is. It's definitely worth uh, sinking the money into. Looking at the scale of everything, it's not hard to imagine 100 kids running through uh, here back in the imagine. day. This is one of the uh, transom doors we're going to be saving too for another piece of the project. Very nice. And then the staircase, awesome. Yeah, a lot of history here for sure. Good scale. You can only got... imagine how many kids have run up here. <laughs> Running away from a teacher. Yeah. Second floor a lot like the first. How many units up here? Uh, three units up here. Okay. So three on the second floor. How many on the first? Uh, four and two down in the uh, lower level. This is going to be one of the units. Yeah, so this is a typical uh, one bedroom unit. Wow. Look at this. So you get the high ceilings yeah. for the individual units, right? Yeah, so that's uh, one of the benefits of having the high ceilings is we can keep the mechanicals in the unit above the uh, kitchen and bathroom and not really lose any space. So living space here, I presume? Living space here, yep. Kitchen? kitchen yep. So it drops down a little bit, but that's okay. Yep. Nothing wrong with that, right? No, still pretty high in here. End of the unit right here. That's this is it. where number one starts. Yep. Yep. And as you wrap around, I see the mechanicals. So this is bathroom in here. Yes, sir. Good size, a lot of space. Not too bad. And then out back here? This is the bedroom. Okay. Bedroom with closet. Oh, yeah. Wow, these ceilings are so high. Yeah, I don't get this often. No, and the windows too, right? Yeah, so they're huge. So this is going to be all they're glass huge. in here? Yeah, they're huge. Yep. Be what some is, good natural light in here. What do you think's going on with the, the it looks like plaster and lath it on is. the outbound side? It is, yeah. So the thought was when we were here originally uh, to start the demo, there were chalkboards on the outside walls. Like up to here? Up to there, oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, for the uh, classrooms. And we're thinking maybe that this stopped the condensation on the uh, chalkboards, yeah. you know, the cool outside and warm inside or vice versa. And where are those chalkboards now? Uh, they're all uh, on-site storage. So we did, took an inventory, put everything in the uh, on-site trailer and uh, kind of figuring out the best use for them now in the unit. That's very cool. Yeah. Hey, I got one other cool thing to show you if you got a minute. I do. All right, let's go. All the time in the world for this place. Wow. All right, so now we're up in the attic, Kevin. Um, so up here we have storage units for each one of the um, tenants. Oh, that's clever. Right? But uh, so the reason I brought you up here, I think is pretty cool, is the, the truss system. Yeah. Check it's a this four out. huge truss system with turnbuckles holding everything together. Look at that, huh? The yeah. old joinery too, and it goes all the way through here. Yeah. And all the, uh, the hip valleys and, uh, and rafters all tighter than uh, we can cut them now. Yeah. And uh, was that roof work going on or what? Yeah, so there was a chimney here. It was an enormous chimney. Uh, and we weren't going to have any use for it, so we took it all down as kind of a space-saving measure for the units below. But to keep the historic value of it, we reframed everything now, and there'll be thin brick up on top to replicate the existing chimney. So from the outside, it looks original. Exactly, yep. All right, Kev, over in the front of the building here, the front gable, there's a uh, Oculus window that we'll be replacing. Oh, yeah, that is awesome. And what's and, with uh, this? So this set of stairs goes up to uh, where the kids would uh, put the flag up in the morning. No. Really? Really. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You can see the original slate roof. You got some snow dogs. Oh, yeah, there's the framing for the old chimney. 
Oh, and over here, I, that's probably the spot where the flag was. I guess if you didn't do your homework, you got flag duty. That's remarkable. Well, Ben, we're going to stick around. We're going to follow this renovation, and we're going to get all the way until those uh, veterans move in. So we'll be back, but I appreciate the tour. I look forward to it, man. Thank right, you. Thank you. All right, we're standing here on the back side of the addition, the back side of the house, if you look right there. Right to my left will be the new garage. This is a hallway to the office. And this right here is going to be an outside deck. It is, and it's going to be living space underneath the deck. And with that, we have to have a roof system to keep it dry. Correct. So now, if you look at these joists right here, because it's a roof, they now become rafters because of the angle. If you look right on the other side, you can see there's probably a three or a four inch difference in the height because of the pitch. Now these are 12 inch eye joists, they're 16 on centers. On this end, they're gonna sit in hangers. This rim joist right here is on an angle. Uh, and because of that, the roof rafters have to be cut on an angle to follow that. So rather than put those on hangers, we've put a ledger down on top of the sill so they'll sit on that and hold them in place. Once this is all in, you'll have the pitch of the roof and the water will shed right off the edge. That's right. And then once all the eye joists are in, we're ready for our sheathing to go on for the uh, subfloor. Right. It'll be this board right here. After that's nailed in place, on top of that will be this the separation board. This is a high density product that will separate the top of the sheathing to the underside of the rubber roof and it'll also withstand the weight of the deck on top of it. Then on top of that, We'll put contact cement on the underside of the rubber and on the top of this board and then bring it right down on the edge just like that. That's right, and once the rubber roof is done, we're going to cut some extra strips to put it on the new rubber roof. It will actually go to adhere to the bottom of our pressure treated sleeper system. Right. Now this angle right here represents the pitch of the roof right there. So if I took this and flipped it over like that, there's the pitch of the roof right there and the top of the decking will be almost level. You want to still have a slight pitch, but it'll be almost level. And that will get glued on like you said like that and that will hold everything in place. That's right. And then all we'll have to do after that is just install our decking. Right. And they'll all get fastened to this. That's right. It's going to be good. It's going to be nice. One hundred and forty years ago when this house was first built, it didn't have any plumbing, I'd imagine. And it certainly never considered that it would have three bathrooms on the second floor alone. But Abe, that's what the homeowners want, so that's what they're going to get, right? That's what they'll get. So we're standing in what used to be a wide open hallway. So ideal spot. Right, but never plumbing here before. never plumbing here. All right, so this bathroom has a tub right here. And because of this overhang from the roof, it forces the tub to be a left-hand tub so the drain is up here in the shower valve. We also have one logical place where a vanity can be right here because you do vanity with sink and a medicine cabinet right here. And the really remaining obvious place for a toilet is right here in this joist bay right here. Standard rough in dimension for a toilet off of a finished wall is 12 to 13 inches exactly on top of a joist. Okay, so what are we going to do there? So what we're going to do, we could, we could box it off down below, cut the structure and box it all off. But we came up yesterday, we had this meeting, we were here for about an hour and a half in this room trying to figure it out. Charlie came up with a great idea to do this. Build this wall out by just enough that now the new rough-in dimension puts the drain on this side of that joist. And that means we're going to go back on this side, get it home. Now, when you look at it, just pull that board in, will you? So this illustrates how we would run this drain waste and vent if it was in a poured concrete floor. You'd have the tub drain and the vanity drain work its way back towards the larger pipe, the toilet drain. It would mean we'd have to drill through this joist, this one, this one, this one, all of them, and we'd have to uh, drill it properly, but also reinforce the joist before. 
But in wood frame, we came up with this the other day. Just go that way with that. And then this will turn this way. And this will go this way. So now everything goes this way and down. So we've solved the tub and the vanity. But we haven't solved yet the toilet. Let's go downstairs and check that out. So down here on the first floor, we're directly underneath where the toilet wants to go right here. Here's that joist that's in question. Now, above us is the tub right here and the vanity right here. And we've solved that drain issue by going this way. So we don't have to go through all these joists. But when you come back to this point right here, this is the mark where the toilet wanted to be exactly there. Our choice was to either head this off and keep it right where it was or to do that pad wall. A brilliant idea, Charlie, if I do say so myself. And move that drain to right here. So now we can go this way and not have to modify this joist right here. But it doesn't mean we're not have to going to go through a couple of joists. Yeah, yes, we do have to go through a couple of joists. So we actually have an inch and three quarter thick joist yeah. by eight inches tall. Yeah. And to do this, we always want to have a minimum of the thickness of the joist, inch and three quarters, left on the bottom as well as the top. Right, never a notch and always a minimum on top and bottom. That's right. right. So in this case, it works fine. Our four inch hole is gonna be right about here. Okay, so now that helps you understand that if that's your minimum and you were trying to run a four inch hole this way, each time you come this way, you have to allow for pitch. That means the hole has to be an eighth of an inch higher and this one has to be an eighth of an inch higher than that, at least, minimum. So that means if you went too far, you'd end up potentially violating the minimum on the top, right? That's right. And in this case, we'd absolutely be in violation because our span is way too long. That's right. So I'm really glad we're not have to drill and sister all these other ones too. That's right. So what about what else you got to do for this? Well, we always like to add a little extra protection. So we like sure. to sister three quarter plywood on each side of the joist, and we always like to glue it and nail it in place. On both sides. On both yeah. sides. All right, so that is now safely ready to drill. It is. Good. What do you think? Sounds great to me, Richard. Good. See what a little planning does? That was a really good meeting, making sure this all fit. It was. That is it for us today. What do you got next week? Next week, we're going to be working on installing a new ridge in the original house to help carry the new oh, ridge on oh. the addition. All right. How about you? What do you got? We're going to get that old boiler out of the basement. Good. So until next time, I'm Rich Trithui. I'm Abe Bilo. And I'm Charlie Silva. For this old house. Get the drill. Let's go. Get Let's the drill. Go. Come on. On three. One, two, three. Next time on right, This Old House. A little more. Our 1880s cape is finally starting to go vertical. Nice, nice. With the demo done and the framing well underway, this is a great time for our electrician Heath to take a look at the sort of, I guess, blank canvas for you now and start thinking about where everything goes. It is. This is actually a great point to start. And it's time to make way for a more efficient boiler.